Hello everyone, this is Atom from Keen Tools, and today I'm gonna show you how to add tattoos to a face in a video inside of Blender. But not only tattoos, this can be any colored image, even an animated one. But we're gonna stick to some basic digital makeup in this video to give you the idea of this great new technique for which we'll need the Face Tracker for Blender add-on. You can download it from the official King Tools website. Once the stable version is released, there will be a free trial of 15 days. So you install it from the Blender preferences. There's a couple of installation videos on King Tools YouTube channel, depending on the Blender version you are using. The links are in the description box. You can also download the full project with all the materials. So let's go straight to Face Tracker. You'll find it here on the sidebar. Press M to see it, click on the tab, then create new Face Tracker. Load your clip in here, then press Analyze and OK. You'll need to wait till the add-on creates an analysis file, which will allow it to do tracking faster. And yes, we'll track the face in this video using a matching face geometry. How do we get one? It's pretty easy. We're gonna build it. Once the analysis is completed, let's press New next to the head geometry input. And here we can scroll through the timeline to select the frame that's gonna serve us as a reference for our 3D head. A three-quarter view like this one is best for this purpose, so let's click on Take Snapshot and here we go. It's going to detect the face and roughly estimate its shape. Now I'm going to use these red pinpoints to line up the things that are off, basically by dragging them. I'll also delete the pins that are useless by right-clicking on them, so they don't prevent the mesh from stretching when I load more views and start adjusting it there. Okay, that's good enough for the first view. I'm going to click on Plus Snapshot to add another view. So just scroll back and forth again and select a different angle, like something more frontal. Take snapshot again. This time we'll need to press auto-align to make it snap onto the face. Again, let's first delete the pens that are irrelevant and create and drag new ones by left-clicking to line everything up. Now for precise 3D tracking, it's important to have an accurate face model. That can be achieved by using more images, like other photos of the same person. Let's upload a couple of more snapshots by using plus image file, and now I'm gonna go through them doing the same thing. Auto align first, delete some pins, drag and create new ones to line up all facial features. For those of you who want to learn more about the process of face building, you can watch our detailed tutorial on creating photorealistic 3D portraits from photos and images. Okay, I'm pretty much happy with my face geometry. I can use it for facial motion capture now. So I'll click on Back to Face Tracker. That's my 3D model, by the way. Looks nice and detailed enough for our purpose. And as you see, it's already plugged into the head geometry input. So I don't need to do anything else. I'll just press Start Pin Mode. Now we see our clip in the viewer again. And this time we'll need to align the mesh to face in the initial frame. That is the one we'll start tracking from. You can use the auto align option here as well, then adjust the mesh position manually if needed. And if it's not aligning as you'd expect it, maybe it's due to the wrong focal length. Let's go to the camera tab. It's set to 50 millimeters now. I'm not sure if the camera on the set had that focal length value, so I'll activate estimate focal length. And as you see, it's calculating the focal length on the go and now lining up is a lot easier. In fact, this is it. We're ready to track it. So I'll hit track forward and just watch it doing the job. It's going pretty well so far, but at some point it starts losing the track. It's okay, the world is not perfect. What I can do is pause tracking and make some manual adjustments. Just put these guys back here, pay attention to mouth and eyelids. The important thing to know here is when we change the position of our face mesh in 3D space manually, we only change it in the current frame. So we need to update its position in all the frames to the left. So let's press refine and wait again. Now that it's completed, you can check if it's smooth enough and go on tracking from the point where you stopped. Let's track till the end, basically repeating the same steps. Track forward, pause when the mesh is off, adjust and refine. A couple of more things to adjust here and there, and I think that looks pretty smooth. You can check what it looks like in 3D. I think it's a really cool 3D face track that we have here. Now the great thing about this technique is that you instantly get an animated 3D model as the result of facial tracking. And that means you can add whatever you want directly onto its surface. But before I start doing it, I want to texture it, just to make things a little easier when I start mapping images on it. Let's go to the pin mode again, scroll to a point where the face is seen clearly and not blurry, and then go to the texture tab, click add frame, and then press create texture. I'm not gonna change any texture settings because I won't use this texture for rendering anyway. Okay, now I have a texture created from a single frame, which gets automatically reprojected to my model. 
If you tap into shading, you'll see it as this image texture node plugged into principled BSDF, which makes it a material for the model. If you're okay about mapping your tattoo or whatever on a blank 3D head, you can skip creating texture, just press this new button and that will instantly add the principled BSDF and material output, so you can also start from there. Anyways, I have my texture and I want to add a tattoo here. All I'm gonna need is add a new image texture, load a tattoo as a PNG, make sure it's a real PNG that has an alpha channel in it, add the mix shader node in between these two, and then plug my tattoo alpha output into the fact here. That gets the tattoo all over the face, so I need to scale it down and locate it. Just select this image texture node and press Ctrl T if you have the Node Wrangler add-on activated, which I'm pretty much sure you do. If not, you can just add one by one these texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Okay, we have our tattoo in the right place on the face, but it looks more like something overlaid rather than inked in. What we can do is add some roughness and bumpiness to it by setting up a new material. So Shift A, add another principal BSDF and connect it to the lower mix shader input here. Then add these three nodes, Voronoi texture, map range and bump. Connect to normal input, increase Voronoi scale to somewhere between 800 and 1000, switch this to smoothest step, go down with from max, play with these values to define the amount of skin pores and their density. Then go to bump, click invert, decrease the strength, and there you go, it looks kind of like a skin texture. You can go to the camera view and press play to check if everything looks good to you. If it does, what's left to do is composite it. The idea for compositing here is make everything transparent apart from the tattoo, maybe also add some light and a bit of blur. First off, I'm gonna replace my head texture with a holdout here. Let's go to compositing, activate use notes, I want the tattoo layer to kind of blend with the background skin texture, so I'm gonna add a mix node and switch it to multiply. Add a movie clip, select our footage, connect it to the top image input, and render layers is gonna go to the bottom image input. I also need to make the world background transparent, so as always I'll go to the render properties, scroll down to the film tab and activate this checkbox. If we render out the current frame, the background will be black, because that's where the alpha has the value of zero, and so when multiplying anything by zero, we get black color. So what we need to do is replace the alpha with the white. Let's add alpha over here in between, then create an RGB node, connect it to alpha over and see what we have. That's great, but the tattoo looks too dark and sharp. There may be two reasons for this. First, it's not reflecting any light. Let's go back to shading, tap into world, add an environment texture node and load an HDR. I'll also add a texture coordinate and mapping nodes to rotate the HDR until I get sort of a matching lighting. Second, I'll need to change the color of the tattoo itself. I'll go back to object and choose some grayish tone for the base color. Then go to compositing again, add gamma in here and go down with it a bit. And also add some blur. And since we're talking about blur, Let's also activate motion blur over here. All right, we can send it to render now. Okay, I think that looks great. You can use this technique for adding colored images too. I'm gonna quickly show you how to add Joker makeup as an example. Let's go back to shading, add another image texture, load a PNG containing this infamous face. Again, note that it has to have an alpha channel in it and you can find this exact PNG in the project folder. So bring it in, but since it contains colors, we'll need to plug its color output into the base color input of our material here, while the alpha output will go again into the fact input here. And also, when adding images that spread all over the face, we need to cut out the eyes and the mouth in our 3D model. To do that, I'll press the edit button next to my head geometry input, go to the model tab and just turn those parts off. So that's basically it. This way you can put any image on someone's face in a video. And you don't even need to quit Blender, which is really cool I think. So I hope you enjoyed it. Download Face Tracker from Kintools.io. You can try it out for free with full access to all of its features. Subscribe to Kintools YouTube channel. Hit the bell to stay informed about our new tutorials and streams. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.